Hey there, Pam Coburn Litvak here. In part two of my series, we will learn the first of four roads out of anxiety and depression. But first, a little background on all four. These all target the mind, how you and I process the things that happen to us. In the last episode, we call this reframing the narrative, meaning we choose to view even the stressful things that happen to us in a new and positive way. All four roads are grounded in a very powerful form of therapy called cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT for short. There are literally hundreds of CBT techniques we could talk about, but I've found they all fall into one of four groups. So I call them the four roads out of anxiety or depression. Here's road number one, do your research. Imagine you and I are research scientists. We're working on an experiment and we're pretty sure we already know how it's going to end. But then we get some data that goes against our theory. Now, the objective thing for us to do would be to use the new data to rework our theory. But that's not what we do. Instead, we try to rework the data to make it fit our theory. Or even worse, we toss it because it doesn't fit our view of things. Doesn't make much sense, does it? Yet this is exactly what you and I often do when we suffer from depression or anxiety. We pay attention only to the information in our environment that jives with our sad or scary worldview, and we ignore the rest. We often don't even know we're doing this until others point it out, but there's a pretty easy fix for it. Examining the evidence for and against our viewpoint, and then we go where the evidence leads us. Here are some questions we can ask. What's the evidence for or against my belief? Am I using all the evidence available to me? Is the quality of my evidence so good that everyone would agree with me? Here's another example. Sometimes, when we're depressed, we accuse ourselves of things we're not really guilty of. So imagine that you are the defense attorney preparing the evidence for this case. The twist here is that you are defending yourself against, well, yourself. But the important point is, it's not your job to pass judgment. You don't have to believe that you're innocent. You don't even have to like yourself. But it is your job to defend yourself as best you can. And you do this by picking apart the prosecution's case, demanding proof and challenging all the evidence. So you ask questions like, what's the evidence for or against the charge? How do we think a fair, unbiased jury would look at this evidence? Are there any other explanations for the defendant's actions? We tend to be harsher on ourselves than on others. So pretending to be our own defense attorney can help us stay more objective than we would be otherwise. The idea is simply to weigh all the evidence for and against our point of view. Which means sometimes we will find that a negative thought is true, at least partly. This happens, right? Sometimes bad stuff happens. Let's say you or I mess up on an important project at work or at school. Our immediate knee-jerk thoughts are, I failed. I'm such an idiot. What are others going to think? They'll probably think I'm an idiot too. The thing is, sometimes negative thoughts have bits of truth in them. Everyone fails sometimes, and sometimes others will judge us for it. But here's the important question to ask. Why would this matter? Maybe it matters because deeper down we're also thinking, if I don't succeed at everything I do, then I'm a failure as a human being. Or, I can't be happy unless everyone approves of me. These deeper thoughts are obviously wrong. They're like dark undercurrents in our mind, pulling us emotionally to places that we should not go, making us feel sad and down on ourselves. We should not let ourselves get caught in these dangerous undercurrents, like needing a perfect success rate or 100% approval by others. Instead, we can choose to reframe the narrative by turning the failure into a learning opportunity. So, I failed at this project. What can I learn from it? The first road out of anxiety and depression is to do our research, examining the evidence for and against our negative thoughts. 
This can help us bypass a lot of stress that might otherwise develop into full-blown anxiety and depression. Please like and share this content and take a few seconds right now to subscribe. Thanks so much.